issue is what's best for the consumer. The issue is what's best for the taxpayers. The issue is what's best for the workers. In this day and age, I believe we have a current system that is meeting the needs of the consumers. When you really think about it, I believe that is occurring. I, I would just respond. The fact of the matter is, the proposal that we put out on the table last session, and that we will be um, really, to a certain extent, just uh, upgrading after the governor's uh, PFM study comes out, that proposal is focused on consumers, taxpayers, and employees. In our proposal, we would offer tax credits to employers that hire and also the employees. This is not anti-union. It is that the private sector can do it better if consumers and taxpayers will benefit. But, but I would say, I would say, particularly when you talk about the workers, do those workers understand that they will not no longer be paying that money to the pension fund? In this day and age, uh, the individuals are trying to take away individuals' pensions. Do they understand that we're no longer contributing to this pension fund? And we know the challenges that we're going through first. Secondly, I also say this to you. Like, like, like with anything, a lot of people think that the grass is a lot greener on the other side. The reality of it is that's one of the reasons that you're going to share. You got people making good families to stay in the way. So I do believe it is a system that first and foremost currently meets the needs of the consumer. Secondly, meets the needs of the taxpayers. And thirdly, meets the needs of public safety. I'm not saying that the money is the reason to make a change. I think it's an additional factor that supports this argument. Now, the other argument that has to be made is um, keep this in mind because I love when the LCD says that they bring in 500 million annually a year. Folks, about 400 million are in taxes. You're not going to have less than taxes. And a minimum, you're going to have more because businesses are paying taxes. Their retained earnings in 2000, 2001 have gone from 150 million down to a negative 8 million. I want to show you this chart. This takes went out the cost of goods. So you take out the cost of goods, which is owed almost $1.1 billion. Yeah, they've been making contributions on average of about $90 million over the last 10 years. Your increased annual tax levies from Border Bleed and how you set your rates will maintain that. Will maintain it. This green line, that green line shows what their revenues have been. The money here that they have been contributing to the general fund at the insistence of the past governor is beyond what they can afford to give and they've had to dip into their retained earnings. So when you talk about the LCB can't make a change on that, Mr. Turnstile, you and I have to look at each other in the mayor for why, in the mayor for why they can't make that change. No, is that focused on the consumer? Do you know what the you know, no, 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 you he just wants to take a you just, but you just made market. you just made a statement. Not doing better in They cannot he operate. The they the cannot operate independent of the changes we allow. That's you and I. You and I can make a change on that tomorrow. First, we can make a change. You can increase the market. I didn't say. I didn't say. No, you said the bottom line is if you want them to have the flexibility that they need, you and I can make that change. That has to be a state law first. So you keep talking about the LCB. The LCB operates in the basis of the liquor code. That's how they operate.